Hello everyone, and welcome once again to Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Uh, I'm Robin at Jack Without a Sea, and today we are tackling the Ayane chapters. Um, so this is just a reminder of all the things we've got. Uh, let's just go ahead and hop right in, because why not? Ayane undertakes a quest to search for a girl named Sumugi who has gone missing. Following her trail, Ayane makes her way into the abandoned inn and encounters the impossible. Stranger in the Rain Ayane is a ninja from the Mugen Tenshin Ninja Clan's Hajinmon Sect. Her mission? To search for a missing girl, Tsumugi Katashina, last seen near Mount Ikami. Ayane spins a purple thread, which should help lead her to the girl. I don't know anything about this. I haven't even seen video of it. I just know that Ayane has a ridiculous character design for this. Oh, but I do like her jacket. It's pitch black. <sighs> oh, it's for Yuhi. With her neck bound. Okay, that's kind of cool. So, okay. The purple thread seems to lead into that abandoned inn. Oh, but not too late. I dig it, she takes a, uh... Oh, her trace works differently. Can't move during it, but... Hello, Crow. And hello, Aleph. have a camera at the moment, which is kind of wild. Um, we are playing as the purple-haired ninja from Dead or Alive for reasons that don't make a lot of sense to me. But we're going to have a good time anyway. Hey, Lark. Tway. Purple Thread shows the quickest route to Tsumugi's location. Follow the Thread to find Tsumugi. <laughs> Listen, these things happen. I am glad you showed up today, though. is blocking the way. Got to find another route. I could try going upstairs. And here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Crow. You're right. My gaming VODs are available for up to 60 days after the initial broadcast. Thank you for this reminder. demographic who couldn't use such a handy feature. Oh. Hey, you good? <laughs> you guys have 
turned into my advertising program. I love it. You can't kill a ghost, Ayane. You can't ninja your way through this. Well, that's fun. <laughs> well, you see, she's a ninja, not a ghostbuster. I didn't sense anything. It's because they're ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, you sold out for me. Ayane agreed to look for a missing girl named Sumugi. Stealing herself into the abandoned inn on Mount Hikami, she was severely wounded by a malicious ghost. How could she fight off these supernatural foes? Ayane made her escape, realizing she may need the help of forbidden magic. Usually, I'm the one that has to sell out. Um, so... It's wild that y'all are selling out for me, so I don't have to. I respect that you are maintaining my integrity as a creator. That which should not be the spirits of the dead. Unable to detect their presence, Ayane covers herself with protect protective charms. Heads back to the mountain. By spirits from the netherworld, Ayane is forced to make a fast retreat into the mountain. From the mountain. There we go. She heads in search of a means to fight her new opponents. Now that chapter was really short. Um, there are, I think, only three chapters for Ayane. This enchantment will bring you to the brink of death. I hope you can withstand the pain. I'm no stranger to pain. Hi, Cat. Hi, Jajanot. You haven't missed much other than Ayane getting totally owned by some ghosts. Now she's back for revenge. Uh, you know, speaking of, I've actually been really interested in picking up the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Maybe I should play that on stream too. Do you hate your sister? Huh? Do you hate yourself? <laughs> yeah, um, Ninja Gaiden, very tough series. The first two games are really good. Third game is pretty good. Hey, Chris. Gosh, a whole bunch of people for this. It is a good jumping on point, very so. Well. Maybe this will be a short episode, maybe not. But it should be fun. This will make you stronger. Sounds like those those brush strokes are burning into her. Which is really interesting. Uh, what's this? Go on. Take it. 
those who reside on the mountain. They cannot stand the brightness hey, Mom. Good of the to see you. stone flashlight. Shadow Sigil. A curse that allows the user to connect with the world of the dead. It enables the user to sense ghosts while masking their own presence. Interesting. Okay, so now we're all tatted up. I sense something. I feel it. It's different from before. Spirit filament will react to a ghost's presence and indicate its status. Lou, unaware. The ghost is completely unaware of Ioni's presence. Oh, this is stealth. Searching. The ghost has sensed Ayane and is looking for her. Even when they cannot see Ayane, ghosts can hear her if she makes a noise. Red attacking. The ghost knows where Ayane is and is ready to attack. Walk up to the spirit. Why not? Just walk right up. If you don't run and avoid making noise, ghosts will not notice you. However, there is something you need to keep in mind. Oh. Hey! Seems ghosts can sense the purple thread. You should reel it back in before they react to it. Ghosts will notice you when you make noise. To avoid detection, move away from the ghost and stand still for a while. Spirit Stone Flashlight is the only means by which Ionic can fight ghosts. Flash the flashlight at ghosts multiple times to temporarily stun them. You can also charge up the flashlight to stun ghosts with just one flash. Ghosts will recover after a while, but they will have lost track of Ionic by then. Takes a while. Okay. Seems ghosts have been weakened, so my chance to get past. Your concealment gauge will not recover while you are running. So let's recover, move away from ghosts, and stand still for a while. Huh. That's a lot of stuff. Can't sense it anymore. With the flashlight and the shadow sigil, I'll be able to get Spooky out of here. This is kind of interesting. They they have successfully made a mode in which you are not remotely equipped for what you're supposed to deal with. Okay, looks like this way. Okay, we're good. We just need it to point us in the right direction. Hasn't noticed me. Should I wait for it to go away? Walking will alert them more than when you stand still, and running will quickly bring them down upon you. The safest option is to stand still and wait, then walk upstairs. Yeah, so they just gave us a stealth game. <laughs> Metal Spook Booba.
We're good now, though. Makes sense. There's three of them. If ghosts get too close to you, even if you don't move, your concealment gauge will go down and be spotted. Sometimes you may have them quietly approach a ghost and stun it with the spirit stone flashlight. Try not to attack. Attract the ghost's attention. Okay. Okay, um, it looks like we're safe-ish. Be very quiet. I have played enough Metal Gear that I should be able to Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. They're all over. Okay. Are great. The visible strings on her underwear are funny too because, sure enough, one of her DOA bikinis does the same thing. Yeah. My corset and leather pants are the most stealthy. Um, really can't go over this tram stamp ultimate territory thing Ayane has going on here. <laughs> yeah. Um, like the spotlight it put on her hip swivel as she walked up the two stairs. Yeah. And like, props to them. It's a good hip swivel. But, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so now we have a means of fighting that works pretty well, actually. We'll pop them once with a charged blast. And then we're going to let them fight us. Hey, bud. That's gonna put him in the stun status. The triangle system. God. I can't stay at home anymore. It's me. I shouldn't be here. My mother and sister get hurt when they try to be nice. I'm weak and I'm lost. So weak I can't even kill myself. She can disappear. Okay. So we're going to all ass. Try me again. Come on. Okay. So they're done. So we're going to run and pop open the door. Colonel, I keep trying to rescue my friends with my dummy thick and the squeak of my leather pants keeps alerting the ghosts. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I do kind of love that they they saw their opportunity to put a dead or alive character in this, and they went for a stealth game. A freaking stealth game. I would say the one downside to this is that there's really no reason to... Um, 
there's really no reason to be super stealthy. I know this isn't necessarily the way we need to go. Okay. Just wanted to check that out. Might be able to move past them. As long as we stay in a slow walk while those arrows are up, I think we'll be good. <laughs> Unrelated to Ionic's butt crack, but I guess tangentially related. <laughs> Ghosts of people killed by the Shrine Maiden seem like the ones from the previous games in that they were just caught in a loop, reliving the death, not even really sentient. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty accurate assessment. Um, there's... Oh, do you want to fight? Let's fight. Hey, bud. Rush past, grab this. Ah, oh, there are still hands. Yeah, um, a lot of ghosts in these games are very much just, like, trying to, like, they're just stuck in a loop. The typical phantasm route of spirits trapped in time. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of super ghosts. Um, they have been a lot of them are like, with the way they phrased it, they are characters who are purposefully brought as close to death as possible. And so their affinity for death, their affinity in the afterlife is so like powerful that they can just maintain a sense of self that isn't otherwise there. And that has been the case. like. All of the most major figures are, like, is that Tsumaki? No, it couldn't have. Oh, so a purple thread is telling me to go. Must have been an illusion, or perhaps it was a vision of the past. Anyway, the thread will lead me to Tsumaki. I just have to trust in it. to have to revisit these ghosts or are they going to clear the fuck out nope they are not going to clear the fuck out hey boo okay let's rush past get around a corner and remove uh, and resume walking normally wait Clearly, we're not going the right way. Where's supposed to go? Oh, okay. We're going where this ghost is hanging out. We're gonna pop her. feels like that's something they thought through in some capacity, which is pretty cool. Well, thankfully, a lot of what we've learned 
from the main game works out here. Oh jeez. This is not too bad. Um, we've actually been doing pretty okay. I was worried when the stealth elements started popping up that this was going to be like a huge pain in the ass. Because stealth segments in non-stealth games are usually terrible. But this is kind of fun. I would say the element of bad design here is that there's not really a lot of actual stealth we can do. It's mostly like... It's better to just stun the ghosts, bait them into counters, and do things that way. Okay. We're only going to use our thread for like a brief second, just to adjust where we need to go. Hey. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? just turn around, we would be really good to go here. Uh. Because if I... If I start a fight with her, we're going to get a lot of ghosts coming towards us. We don't want to do that. But we're just going to gently follow her from behind. Pick up that item on the way. Let ourselves take our time. Stay still. Pick up an item. Oh, I think we'll be able to make it through here without getting caught. I was just complaining about the stealth mechanics of this, and here we are, doing us some serious heckin' stealth. <laughs> Ugh, dead lady drowned my ass. Lady, you and like 12 dozen other schoolgirls. I got places to be. genres like fighting games specifically it actually reminds me I really should play it takes two so here's something to mention while we're doing all this um ooh. Eat. 
Um, one of the things Lark and I have discussed is doing co-op streams. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how that'll be arranged, but there are a bunch of co-op games that we like to play, and it seems like it would be a really fun idea to join forces. <laughs> What's this? It drew with the steel folding chair! God, if only. Give us a proper sequel to Fatal Frame, uh, to this Fatal Frame, and let Rui be the main character. She's, she just becomes a buff trans man. Still gay as hell. You gotta spell stuff weird when it's a fighting game. Let's see. Making good progress, actually. And a lot of these items are at the same locations that they were. So, you get to enjoy. Egg got yolked. That's all I can think of. It's the only pun I got. <laughs> ah, shit. Stealth mechanics are pretty forgiving now. <laughs> hard boiled detective game. Just just make Fatal Frame hard boiled, and it's a detective game where Rui gets the camera obscure and solves mysteries. Shit. That's actually a really good idea. Rise of the Egg, Ghost Poacher. I don't need a voice. Mine is like my mother's, more than my sister's is. I wish it were the other way, then it would have been easier. If I'm quiet, no one gets hurt. Nobody will be sad. It was a vision. Is this another effect of the Shadow Sigil? Tamuki must be trapped and close to death be true of me as well. See, I kept thinking that was for Yuhi whenever I saw her because it was like all the same visual notes. But there are like three characters who look like for Yuhi, including for Yuhi herself. Ayane cast a spell on herself, bringing her closer to death. Enveloped in darkness, she followed a purple thread connected to her target, Tsumugi. The thread led her to the Shrine of the Ephemeral, located on the summit of Mount Hikami. Hot damn. So I believe this third thread is the last one. Purple thread connected to Tsumugi vanishes at the shrine of the ephemeral. Wow. Let's take a second shot at that. The purple thread connected to Tsumugi. Wow. Let's take a third shot. Uh, the purple thread connected to Tsumugi vanishes at the shrine of the ephemeral atop Mount Hikami. Ayane makes her way in. There we go. Nailed it. Shrine of the Ephemeral. God, 
I really need to play Ace Attorney Investigations too. I have a copy. I just need to actually like patch it and play it. Purple Thread leads Ayane to the Shrine of the Ephemeral on Mount Hikami's summit. She heads inside the old shrine, which seems to exude darkness itself. Purple Thread is getting stronger. Tsukuki must be close. Yeah, um, that's actually... I mean, it's not super common, but that actually does pop up from time to time. People will stick in prototypes and ideas for future games as mini games. It's kind of neat. She told me I can be strong so long as I have this thread. I don't know what to do. I want to be strong. Thinking I can't be strong is worse than not thinking at all. Honestly, salient point, man. Um, one thing I recall is that in Super Mario 3D World, uh, they had prototyped Captain Toad Treasure Tracker uh, as like an optional mode. And that is like, they just did that in the engine to try some stuff out. And that's what greenlit the game. That's what greenlit Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for Wii U and eventually Switch. Um, just because it turned out to be a pretty popular mode. All the way over here, or are you turning around? Because, like, bitch, I got you. You want to fight? I got you. Oh, you want to fight? Okay. So let's rush on through. Ah, shit. Okay, so the concealment gauge, as long as it's full, or has any amount of energy in it, oh geez, we will generally be good to go. Ooh, that's some noise.
I have no idea judging on, but that's just a major mechanic of this game. We made it. Ayane searched the Shrine of the Ephemeral. She located and rescued Samugi, who was being swallowed by the black water. An unsettling presence surrounded the pair. Beings from the netherworld were all around. Oh, hot damn. Another S rank. Last thread. Okay. I was worried. This was feeling really short, but we have one more chapter. DOA 5 is uh, 5 and 6 both boast a lot about their superior advanced sweat and water graphic systems. Yep. A lot of uh, Koei Tecmo Studios uh, collaborate with each other. Uh, so it's not unusual for these teams like Project Zero, uh, Team Ninja, and Omega Force to like have a lot of the same systems at their disposal. So it makes sense. Ayane rescues Samugi from the shrine, but the two are surrounded by creatures from the netherworld. Ayane takes Samugi with her and plans their escape. Plans or just fucking hightails it? Let's find out. This might be an hour long stream. Maybe I'll figure out something fun to do uh, to pass the time, but we'll figure it out. Within the shrine of the ephemeral, Ayane locates Samugi and rescues her from the black water. The next step is to plan their escape. Surrounded by evil spirits, Ayane knows she has to think fast. Let's fucking go. Get out. Fast. Ow. Okay, where are we going? Okay, there's going to be a ghost popping up in front of me here in a second. Okay. It is possible to get it around them, maybe. Okay, and now it's not. I do like that they were fair to the man enjoyers in the audience too, and gave ran a white tuxedo and became translucent and slightly damp. Okay, we'll need to pop this guy. Damn it. You gotta have the box ears. Yeah, I think. What's interesting about like the male characters in these games? Oh, our tattoos are washing off. Interesting. Huh. And now they're thick. That's really interesting. Oh man. Okay, I believe Samugi is still with us. Kind of. She'll show up. It'll be fine. The good thing about the... Oh. This isn't great. Oh, but she just gave us a clear pass. <laughs> oh, 
hell yes, we did it. Cool. Uh, I wanna grab whatever the hell this is, because who knows? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm never playing this game without Ren's box ears. And I think, I think, if I gotta be honest, Ren is for the lesbians who love, uh, boys love manga. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Because anime boys are kind of for the lesbians. Don't at me. You're suffering because of your sister. She understands how you feel, I promise. She's your family. It might not seem like it now, but don't worry. She cares for you very deeply. That's what families are. People who care for one another. Clearly, Ayane has seen some personal growth between Dead or Alive games. It's okay. You'll get stronger. Dead or Alive 7, new character, Sabugi. Nailed it. <laughs> okay. That was all of Ayane's chapters. I, uh, I didn't know how long it would take. <laughs> Someone let Hot Boss know a ninja just solved one of the uh, case files she was hiding under the bed. <laughs> <sighs> Man, this is... This is really fun. Um, what do we want to do? So I believe the episode number uh, or episode percentage is based on our rankings for uh, Nightmare Difficulty. There are a number of chapters that don't have any rankings, like the Interlude Prologue. Um, then the ghost list and archive is something I'll have to work on as I go. Uh, oh, walking behind that scantily dressed ninja, perhaps the night didn't awaken in anything. And you know it did. You no, know it did. So I would probably say that was typical of like an expansion for a game. Um, not really a hell of a lot to it. Ooh. So this is concept work from the first Fatal Frame. I figure, why not? Let's flip through some of this, because I think it would be cool. I do appreciate that some of this is not like super refined. It's just simple character work, kind of rough. Yeah, that mode was fun. It was definitely an interesting way of manipulating the core engine to do something it was kind of intended to do, but not really. Turn a photography game into a stealth game. Oh, yay. And honestly, the mechanics, the more I got into them, the better, they, the better I felt about them. With the remainder of this time, um, 
Everyone suggested cases for Detective Rui to solve, with occasional flirtatious banter where a baby trans man radiating newfound confidence visits Ren in his messy office for case files or folklore. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea. Suggest some cases. Let us theorize a potential Fatal Frame 6 or whatever number they're currently at. Starring Rui, the trans man detective. God, that is a... I know Yoshimitsu from Tekken and Soul Calibur is just using a mask. That is pretty common, but that is a Yoshimitsu PlayStation 1 FMV Tekken 1 mask right there. I love it. Oh, they all have different... Well, okay then. Got a little nasty with the audio there. <laughs> and now some ghost heads. Right, the first game had some weird floating heads that you would occasionally fight. I forgot about that. Surprisingly cool for the time. Okay, so I believe this is the last time we're playing Fatal Frame the series for a while until like I until they release another Fatal Frame or um they remaster the original games and add enough content that it would be worth trying for, or I get good enough at the first three that we can go after the alternate endings. Um, but we've played, like, one, two, three, and five, um, which is kind of cool. I don't know who this is, but she's great. Like, look at that. Ah, uh, some PlayStation 1-ass textures. I want to see more pools from contemporary folklore in future games. Uh, Tall Lady was great. Slipmouth woman in there as well. Yeah. Um, that would be cool, actually. Dang, I'm starting to think about it now. Yeah, like... They are... They threw in some more cryptids and yokai uh, into this one. Ooh. Let's us just go straight into Fatal Frame 2. That's neat. I love that. Um, I think if they branch off from the main story, which I think by this point, they've justified doing their own thing. Um, even if they take a lot of the same characters, they could still do some neat stuff with like new environments, new folklore, new, um, oh cool. She went through some minor changes with this render. Um, I would love to see a game like this that pulls from yokai, especially modern cryptids in Japan. Um, that would just be a lot of fun. I would love to see more games do that in general, because we've got Yokai Watch, but that's not the same thing. We have some low-budget uh, titles that seem really cool. But I would love to see a Fatal Frame that really goes all in on designing some... Let's turn this audio down just a little bit because, oh boy, I have to compete with it now. There we go. I would love, I would love to see just so many more modern yokai. Um, plus, like, okay. Y'all know the game Prop Hunter, right? Or Prop Hunt? Because of the way... I believe it's the Shinto religion... puts uh, 
faith and belief in modern, uh, like just regular everyday objects and how yokai are based on all of those things, um, you could totally do a prop hunt with yokai and just build a photography game around trying to hunt and track down yokai in the environment. Um, like, I think that would be really cool. <laughs> Naked men who licks bathroom walls. <laughs> that does remind me that uh, one of these days I should get good at White Day, a labyrinth called School. Um, it's got some absolutely wild visual design. Uh, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very middleware, middleware is the right word. It's a very single A uh, title. Originally for mobile platforms, they put it on consoles and PC. And it's really interesting, but kind of hard to play. It's a bit clunky. Um, but they go even harder than Fatal Frame on some of the designs. They they do a really cool thing with um, Sukumogami. Tools that gain their own spirit after a century. Yeah. Yeah, I would love a game like that. I would love a game that use, utilizes those because a lot of yokai are also built off of everyday objects like the the hopping umbrella, the um, Why is that the only thing I'm pulling out of my head? I know there are plenty. Whatever. You get my point. Um But I would love that. I would love a Sukumogami game. Um Yeah, uh, Pokemon utilizes a lot of yokai, um, and a lot of concepts from Shintoism and, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, uh, it's really good. It's a great little lantern with a mouth. It, like, it's a great concept, like, just an umbrella that just comes at you. It's so simple, and yet, like, it's always visually entertaining. God, there were a lot of dudes in Fatal Frame 2, huh? There she is. My favorite. The one who keeps falling. Oh god, the concept work is really good. I'm sorry, I love this drawing. This is really good. <laughs> Uh, one of the drowned ladies. And then we have Fatal Frame 3. Our good girl, Ray, Still one of my favorite characters in the series. I like a lot of the characters in Fatal Frame Made in the Black Water. Rui is clearly best. But Ray is probably my favorite protagonist in any of these games. Oh, that was a good... That's a good kimono. Oh, she gets two! Interesting. Oh, a business outfit. Animate outfit, of course. They get old enough to have souls and come alive, and their wear and tear becomes facial features. Oh, that's... That's really interesting. Miku's kimono. Her... Fatal Frame 1 outfit in Japan. Also a made outfit. Put him... In a maid outfit. Damn. Just, just cowards. Cowards, a lot of them. We've seen her a lot. God, I, I do. Fatal Frame three and five, doing the whole like ghosts invading our own home thing, was so freaking cool. I think that was my favorite part of Maiden of Blackwater and my favorite part of Fatal Frame 3. Like, just walking around this house that we're supposed to feel safe in, it just becomes slowly more and more corrupted. Like, that's just so cool. Yeah, I think if they do another Fatal Frame, and I hope they do. Hey, Team Zero, Project Zero, make another one. I, I will absolutely buy it day one. Um, but... Objectify the men. Even a butler outfit. Like, 
the maid outfits are actually nice and tasteful. Like they're they're not sexy, they're just cute. Give us a butler outfit. So key, you need to have the gloves. I'm sorry. This is my rule. Yeah, Silent Hill the Room. Silent Hill the Room, I have a lot of trouble with because they do such a good job with Uncanny Valley. Like, there is so much stuff in Silent Hill the Room that they pulled off exceptionally well for the PlayStation 2. I don't like the game that much. I've never beaten it, and I have had trouble getting through it as a result. Oh, hey. Um, but the visuals, the, the, the Uncanny Valley component to Silent Hill the Room is so unbearably good that it is legitimately upsetting to look at. Even in like the regular gameplay engine. Like, god damn. <laughs> if we gave Rand a tasteful Chippendale outfit, I wouldn't be mad. You know, yeah. Like, we just... Oh, we get to see her before and after her change. Okay, one thing I will note. They actually did a good job of desexualizing this design and putting the focus on the tattoos. Like... She just looks kind of horrifying in a really fun way. Like, I actually legitimately love how they approach this. Um... Like, it's just, it's just good stuff. Oh, the long lady. The priestesses. Oh God, there were four of them. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They each had their own room. Yeah, they just knew well enough that if they were going to pull this off, they desexualized the bus. They kept the bodies fairly narrow in terms of their, like, proportions. And so you got to focus on the skin texture. And that's what's really, like, scary about them. It was great. It's good stuff. Honestly, a lot of these designs are like that. Like, there are elements of sexuality in some of them, but for the most part, they do a really good job of making the women just look generally scary. God, Miku, that outfit is... You know what? You pull it off. It's fine. Add permitted term, ass titties. <laughs> oh, oh wow, they leveled up their actual drawing game for Fatal Frame 3, huh? Oh, these are rough scans, too. But I do appreciate, like, like this is some... They tightened up their work a lot. Yeah, for those of you who haven't seen our um, Fatal Frame 3 run through, I would strongly recommend going and checking that out because, damn, that is a good game. Oh, shit. I love this. Just gonna take a screenshot. And then we've seen the uh, concept work for that. I figured that's uh, that's a good way to stop for the moment. Um, but hey, 
This has been Made in the Black Water. Uh, I don't know what else there is to talk about. Um, this has just been a really fun game. I'm so glad I got to go through all four of these games this month. Uh, these past two months? Yeah, a month and a half? Something like that. Uh, this has quickly grown into one of my favorite survival horror games. Uh, they're really fun to play. Uh, again, if you want to play these yourself, um, they're available still on PSN, uh, specifically through the PS3 store, uh, the first three games. You can still buy Made in Blackwater on Wii U, uh, digital only, and you can also get the current remaster on most major platforms, including Switch, PS4, and Xbox series, um, Steam, um, I, I don't if if you're interested in these they're really easy to get into they're not like hard to figure out um, and there's a lot of stuff I haven't like showcased uh, I did some stuff off stream that were like unique elements including like getting into the kids that kept showing up in Maiden of Black Water uh, there's a little section where you hunt down their effigies which is pretty cool um, so, like, this is not a complete run-through, but it is, like, all of the critical story content, most of the files. Like, we did a good job of scraping everything. Um, so, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, Fatal Frame, everybody. It's good. Go play it. Um, so, we'll call it here. Uh, I've been Robin at Andrew Jack with OC. Uh, we'll be working on Haunting Ground either tomorrow or Thursday, depending on how uh, our friend Ryan is feeling. Um, and Haunting Ground will be our last game for the Halloween extravaganza. Uh, so that one is also a rare title for the PS2. You probably haven't seen it. And if you have, you know that it's probably going to be a really interesting time. So, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, get hydrated. Get vaccinated. Get masked up. Be good, be safe, be awesome, and be gone. I know it was a short stream, but it was still, like, really fun. Thank you, guys.